Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reading Multi-Character Existener by me. So let's get into it. Giving you the vision was the wisest thing that he has ever done. It was a decision that he has never really regretted. And with a higher vision that was always beating and pulsing with your power, he could rest knowing that you were safe and alive and well. And that vision at your side always lets him know. So, when something goes wrong, he's bound to be the first one to find out. He's not usually focusing on what you are doing with your vision. And usually he does not feel the connection between you two unless he specifically focuses on it. So, once he does feel it, it's due to one thing. And one thing only. The pulse is weakening. It's late at night. On some days when he can't visit you, he just does with what he can, and tries to feel the connection between you two through your vision. But this time, there was barely anything that he was feeling from you at all. If you were well, then this would not be happening, and that's what concerned him most. What could he be going through? And are you in danger? He had no idea, and it just terrified him. What could be truly going on? He didn't want to find out. But, but he had to. And he knew that he had to. Because he could not just wake up with himself and know that, maybe, he failed in saving you. But there could have been a chance. And he was the one who ruined it. That's why he immediately got up and went to your place. But the door was open, and you weren't inside. The signs of a struggle were very clear. And maybe he was foolish to think that you were in your place in the first time. So, he does something else. Something he has promised himself to never do. Only out of consideration for your privacy. But right now, there wasn't much that he could do. There was only the chance of you being gone completely. And it was something that he was quite unwilling to rest. Something that he could not just have peace with. So that's why, immediately as he got the first chance, he told the guards. And a search order has been issued. And then, he tried to find you, using your own vision to guide him. And that's when he finds out where you were. You were taken to a strange place, a place that he knows, actually, a mansion of sorts. It belongs to a nobleman, and he's quite sure that he knows his name, if only because he met with him just a couple weeks ago, and Navilat had refused to actually help him with the matter, if only because it seemed entirely immoral to do so. What that person wanted was entirely selfish and disgusting, to say the least. And Nubilat was not going to help with anything of that sort. But to think that someone will try using you against him. That was so upsetting. But it has happened before, and maybe he should have known that some things were bound to repeat themselves, no matter how much humanity has changed. Immediately after finding out your whereabouts, he heads there. He does not take any guard mix with him, or guards or anyone. He knows that he alone can deal with this. Once he reaches the mansion, he does not see anyone but the guards outside. He doesn't ask them for permission. No, he storms straight in to where that vision of yours is telling him to go. That is where he will stop. And then, as he sees the nobleman try to stop him, Nuvalet pushes him away. He is not one for violence, but he's going to protect you if the situation calls for it, and right now it certainly does. He heads to the basement, and his heart beats louder with every step. How could someone do this? Why? But, when he opens the door, you're inside. You're trembling. 
It seems like you have a fever, and you're passed out. That explains it, then. The weakening pulse. And the panic that he felt. It must be because of your special connection. He carries you in his arms. And he does not need to do anything to the noble man. No. As much as he wishes he could do everything that he should, he's not going to disobey his own laws. He will make sure he pays. He makes the guards take him away. He will sentence him to Mirabite first. De Villette applies the laws to every citizen in Fontaine. But Mirabite is outside of those laws. And so, he can reach him there. And he can do what he truly wishes. He's quite sure that Riesling won't mind. But for now, you were the priority. Not revenge. And nothing else. Right now, he just wanted to make sure that you'd be okay. He had to take you to see a tween. And she took great care of you. There were thankfully no more injuries. Just a bruise. Besides the fever. But it was not big or anything that was terribly bad. It would heal soon. She only told him to stay by her side and monitor you. In case something went wrong. And gave him medicine. But his heart hurt all the while, because he felt like he should have done more. He should have been there sooner. But right now, you are safe and sound and you are with him. And that's all he could truly really ask for. When you woke up, his head rested atop your hand, and he was asleep. And you couldn't help but smile and sigh to relief. You knew that he loved you. Yet sometimes it was still surprising to see just how much you did. Thank you, Nivellette. Thank you so much. You said, kissing his cheek gently. You were tired, but you didn't want to make him up right now. You were sure there weren't going to be a lot of emotions. And considering the rain outside, you just needed them to rest. You'll be awake for now, and you won't sleep until it's if you talk. But there was nothing bigger than the relief in your heart and the amount of love that you held for Nivellette.